This is the RCA Dome in Indianapolis, the scene of a crucial game in the AFC East. This afternoon, the Miami Dolphins, the division leaders, take on the Indianapolis Colts. The Dolphins will have to do it without starting quarterback Jay Fiedler. Damon Heward will start. Peyton Manning tied for the lead in touchdown passes in the NFL for the Colts. Back right after this. Here's what's at stake in Indy today. The New York Jets have already won. If Indianapolis should beat Miami, it will create a three-way tie atop the division. The Buffalo Bills trailing at the moment down in Tampa. Greg Gumbel, Phil Sims, Armin Katayan. We're glad that you've joined us here at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. Dave Wanstead, his first season as head coach of the Miami Dolphins. And on the other sideline is Jim Mora, the veteran. And you see his record here at home. It should be a lively crowd and usually favors these Indianapolis Colts. The Colts usually, they, Greg, you're right, they take advantage of the home field. They get off to a lot of fast starts. So the game plan for the Miami Dolphins try to stop Indianapolis from scoring on their opening drive. The Colts have won the toss, and they will receive. Olindo Mare kicks it off and won't make it back to the 15-yard line. Drake Jeffries, Tommy Hendricks with the stop. And here comes Peyton Manning, the quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. 255 completions, number two in the NFL, 3,244 yards passing, the most in the National Football League. Well, they'd like to get off the big start, Greg, to make plays, to score points against the Dolphins today. The Colts know they got to throw the football down the field in the air to make those big plays. Starting from the 14-yard line. Manning up the middle and is hit by number 99, Jason Taylor. No gain. It'll be second and 10. Indianapolis offensive line of Glenn McKinney. Saturday, Moore and Meadows has allowed just 14 quarterback sacks. That's the third best total in the league. Look at the backs and receivers for the Colts. The difference with them is they come with two tight ends. They like Ken Dilger and Marcus Pollard, Pollard in there at the same time. There's Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator for the Colts. James, the only man in the backfield behind Peyton Manning. Manning over the middle. Has his man out to the 30-yard line. Ken Dilger, the tight end, and it's first down. Well, the one thing Peyton Manning told us yesterday to have success throwing the football down the field. My tight ends have to do a good job in the center of the field. This time, the play action fake allows Ken Dilger to get it wide up. Look at Zach Thomas, how far he was away from the tight end. Ken Dilger's 43rd catch of the season marks a new career high for him. And the line of scrimmage now the 30-yard line. James' first carry gets about two, maybe two and a half yards on the play. We'll call it a two-yard pickup. It'll be second and eight. Miami's defense, the front four, Mixon, Bowens, Gardner, and Taylor. Taylor held without a sack last week. He had gone six straight weeks with at least one. The Dolphins hope middle linebacker Zach Thomas is back in form. He's missed the last four weeks with an ankle sprain. Look at the secondary, Sertain, Marion, Walker, and Madison all have an outstanding season. A lot of interceptions in that defensive backfield for the Miami Dolphins. Manning has it, throws, pops up in the air, incomplete, intended for Edger and James out of the backfield. Well, we told you about that Buffalo-Tampa game. Let's check in with Jim Nance. Yeah, a lot of eyes uh, down there in that uh, Indianapolis area on the Bills today. Looks like they're going to lose. Warwick Dunn, 39-yard burst, gives the Bucks a two-touchdown lead with two minutes to go. Jets have already won out of that division. And let's go back to you guys, Greg and Phil. All right, Jim, so that means that the Buffalo Bills will fall to 7-5. and five. Third and eight for Manning. First time today out of the shotgun. Steps up, throws far side, has his man, Marvin Harrison, out of bounds. At about the 45-yard line, it's a first down. Well, that time, Peyton Manning stepping up in the pocket to give himself a little bit of extra time. But watch Marvin Harrison. He's going to fake to the inside. It's a good fake. 
and separates from Sam Madison. Peyton Manning looking for him all the way. Marvin Harrison is a guy who has been under scrutiny of late and says he has to go out and just prove that he can continue to do it because the last three games, as you see, have been very, very tough games by comparison to the first eight. Standards are awful high, Greg, but he's still, of course. Just because he won a few games where he didn't catch a lot of passes, his teammates are catching the passes, so uh, you can't throw every time you drop back. You can't throw it to Marvin Harrison. The play clock was winding down on Peyton Manning. That's why he called a timeout. But those numbers bear repeating. Marvin Harrison averaged 120 yards a game over the first eight games of the season and then just totaled 104 the last three games. For the first time today, let's check in with Armin Katayan down on the field. Armin. Thanks, Greg. You know, you mentioned Marvin Harrison. He was talking this week in the paper saying how frustrated he was. He wasn't getting the ball. Only six catches in the last two games. Peyton Manning had a meeting with him. He said, listen, I understand your frustration, but what you have to understand is that other guys are going to get the ball according to the coverage. Harrison wasn't really happy about that, but today he's got to face Sam Madison, so we'll see how well he does against the best defensive cornerback in the league. Well, Greg? if you saw those numbers, it's almost funny to talk about. He's got over 1,000 yards, over 70 catches, so... Well, it's a little dry spell for a couple games, but he'll see his share of passes today. Manning, this side incomplete bounced up in the air and it's intercepted going down the sideline is Sam Madison for a touchdown the official says that ball never touched the turf bounced off of the player and therefore is an interception I don't think it ever hit the turf Greg it's tight coverage Manning throws an excellent ball watch it low it to the outside make the receiver go down protect against the corner and here comes the ball watch it it's on the ground and then it pops up there is a, a flag on the field so the officials are walking back in any event well even if there was not a flag in the field this would have been brought back our referee today is Ron Blum holding 23 defense five yards first down the penalty is on Patrick Sertain, a holding penalty. So that would have negated it as well. Well, we talked about this Indianapolis Colts offense. It gets off the good starts. They want to go down the field to try to pick up the big plays by throwing it a long way. And also, they want the tight ends to go down the middle and make some passing plays because that's the easy spot to pick on in, in this Miami defense. Dave wants that talking about the things they had the Miami Dolphins had to correct this week off of a loss down in Miami to the New York Jets he said we have to quit the turnovers and they had four of those last week and we have to correct the penalty situation Miami was penalized 11 times for 99 yards against the Jets a week ago On first down, Manning hands to Edwin James, and James to the right side to about the 46-yard line, a pickup of three, and it'll be second and seven. We're talking about the season Marvin Harrison is having. Um, Edwin James, 14 total touchdowns on the season. That's number one in the National Football League. 1,191 yards rushing. Oh, yeah, that's also best in the NFL. That's not bad stuff. So when you come in the game, you're the defense. Who do you try to stop? Do you put all your power into stopping the running back? If you do that, that lets Marvin Harrison run around your secondary. Second and seven. Trying the left side into about the 42-yard line is Jane. Daryl Gardner in on the stop, who had an outstanding game a week ago. Pick up a four, it'll be third and three. Well, the one thing, because of Daryl Gardner and Tim Bowens inside, I think the Miami Dolphins believe they don't have to cheat. In other words, they can let their front seven, the defensive line and linebackers, stop the run. The secondary can stay back and try to protect against those long passes. Daryl Gardner had, a, had another fun conversation with him and his running mate at the tackle position, Tim Bowens, last night. Third down out of the shotgun, Manning. Rifles it, complete inside the 30 to Jerome Payton, and it's a first down. 15-yard pickup, Manning to Payton. 
Well, there's a lot of nice things what the Colts are doing so far today because Miami, look at this formation. Miami is so good at man-to-man -man coverage, they're getting in different formations. They keep the defensive backs away from the receivers, let them get down the field, and that time it was just enough to let Peyton Manning throw a strike in to Jerome Payton. Boy, nice catch. When you go up in the air, he knows he's going to get hit. Both hands on the football. Nice job. Brock Marion delivering the, the blow. Jason Taylor just walked slowly off the field, taking a breather on the sideline. And Rich Owens has replaced him. First down, Indianapolis. Peyton still has it. Throws down the middle. End zone. Touchdown! Marvin Harrison with the diving grab. 27 yards, and the Colts are in the lead. Well, that was nothing but speed that time, Greg. And hey, that'll get Marvin Harrison, Harrison out those blues and make him feel good. Peyton Manning looking for him down the field. He just used his speed to run right by the secondary. Mike Vanderjack for the extra point. And it's good. Marvin Harrison, the guy who says, well, I've got to improve my game, has picked it up here in the first quarter, a quarter in which Manning and the Colts excel. The touchdown pass to Marvin Harrison, and Indianapolis is up 7-0. Walker caught inside. Brock Mary in the backside safety. He doesn't see it quick enough. And the perfect throw. Tough to stop that. Boy, Marvin Harrison laying out in the end zone. Now, see, there, there are very few teams in the National Football League that try this. Watch Marvin Harrison. He's going to run through the defense. Nothing to hold those safeties. Watch it. They just get fooled by the run. Brock Marion way too close. Phil, on that drive, Peyton Manning, four out of five for 71 yards. And in the first quarter, he is a career 104.6 in the quarterback rating. Peyton Manning comes out of the chute on fire. Well, that tells you, you saw Jim Moore, how excited he was. He wanted his team to get off the good start. Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator. And when you, when you give out them stats, Greg, yes, Peyton Manning is talented. Marvin Harrison's good. But that tells you Tom Moore doing a good job of planning the opening sequence for the game and getting his offense in the right frame of mind. 21 of Manning's 77 career touchdown passes have now come in the first quarter. Danny Kite will kick it away. And so Miami will start from their own 20-yard line. And Miami quarterback Damon Heward. Came on last week when Jay Fiedler was injured on the first play of the game. He was intercepted three times. Coach Dave Wonstadt says he'll be better today after a week of practice. Well, we got a chance to talk to Damon Heward last night, and I know he was anxious. He wants to get back out in this game today, get things going, and make up for what he did last week. He's going to approach, I'm sure, how he's going to play differently, not force things, but also look for Miami the offense they give him a better chance to to get off to a good start there's jay fiedler the number three quarterback today he was going to throw on first down a little flip out here doesn't go anywhere jj johnson is nailed by cornelius bennett for a loss of four the miami offensive line Webb, Dixon, Ruddy, Donnelly, they are happy with the play of the rookie Todd Wade at right tackle. You look at the backs and receivers, J.J. Johnson starting for Lamar Smith, who's out with a sore hamstring. There's offensive coordinator Chan Gailey upstairs. Well, you know, good play call in the first play, throwing a screen pass, so just to give Damon here the chance to complete the pass, get off to a good start. And timeout is called by the Miami Dolphins, so the timeouts now are down to two each for each squad, and let's go down to Armin. Thanks, Greg. You know, you're talking about Damon Hewitt in that disastrous game last week against the Jets. He had a surprising call this week from an unexpected source, Dan Marino, who told him, listen, 
you know, you tried to do too much on the field. You tried to make things happen that weren't there. This is another week. Keep your head up. But Dave Wanstad told me before the game, if Heward starts slow and goes south in this game, he would use Mike Quinn, who has not played a single snap all season at quarterback. Greg? All right, Armin, that was number four, Mike Quinn, that you saw in the picture there on the sideline. And Dave Wanstad telling us last night, they've tried to simplify things a great deal for Damon Heward today. He said, no audible, no check with me. Well, that, they're doing that, Greg, for the crowd noise here to try to eliminate mistakes. But I think that what Armin was talking about, they want Damon here to get off to a good start so his teammates will feel good about him because last week there was a lot of grumbling. They, some of the players wanted to be taken out of the game. They don't want to get in that situation today. J.J. Johnson in a little running room and gets out to the 22-yard line. That'll be a six-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be third and eight. The Indianapolis defense, the 4-3 begins with Holsey, Williams, Johnson, and Bratsky. Josh Williams, a rookie, the fourth-round pick from Michigan. Cornelius Bennett in his 14th year for Miami Dolphins, Dwight Hollier, and the team's leading tackler, Mike Peterson. And look at the secondary burst, Belzer, Coda, and Poole. Jim Moore would love to see those guys come up with some turnovers. The noise factor comes in here in the RCA Dome on third and eight. Hewitt over the middle has his man first down Autry Denson to about the 31 yard line. Well Autry Denson he comes out of the backfield four wide receivers spread out Damon Hewitt spots him boy nice pass over the middle and this is a big first down for the Miami offense and for Damon Hewitt. As you look at Autry Denson also Last night, talking to Dave Wanstead, he expects, even though his starting running back is out, he says between J.J. Johnson and D Denton, we are going to have a good day from the running back position. First down, 31-yard line. Johnson, the right side, can't shake off the tackler, and that's number 52, Mike Peterson. Peterson comes into this game with a team-leading 109 tackles on the season. Here you go, Mike Peterson, number 52. Does a good job. Doesn't get caught up inside. Supposed to be outside to protect against the breakout by the running back and in good position to make the tackle. As you saw the scores running across the bottom of your screen, Buffalo has lost at Tampa Bay. Drops the Bills to 7-5. and five. Hewitt under the gun. Goes down. Number 90, Mark Thomas. Well, that's a drive killer for the Miami Dolphins. Good job on Mark Thomas, who makes the play that time. Chad Brasky, it was a screen play. He saw it. He went right to J.J. Johnson, stopped the pass play. Damon Heward, you've got to throw that one away. Jim Morris says, for my defense to be successful, we've got to go all out all the time, and so far today, a lot of energy by the Colts defense. Blake Hawk is down to three, two, one, and they get the snap off. Hewitt steps up, throws Denson from the backfield, 25, and brought down at about the 26-yard line. Mike Peterson again in on the stop. Mike Peterson, about the most active player on the field so far. Matt Turk set to kick it away, and Terrence Wilkins is deep. <laughs> Turk booms it. Wilkins lets it bounce at the 20, goes inside the 10, inside the 5. And they may have a little talk with Terrence Wilkins about letting that one fall as it rolls dead at the one-yard line. That's only a 70-yard punt for Matt Turk. That's why he's a little grateful back at the other end. I tell you, there's one thing punters think of when they come to Jones. Man, I got a chance to fatten up my average. And that time, Terrence Wilkins not going for the catch really caused valuable field position for the Indianapolis Colts. Had plenty of time, too. 
Terrence Wilkins still with plenty of speed has lost his starting job at the wide receiver slot the last three games to Jerome Payton. And you can see on the sideline, Kevin Spencer, the special teams coach, and Jim Mora unhappy with uh, the decision he made the last time out there. From the one yard line. James straight ahead. For about three yards, it'll be second and seven. Jermaine Haley with the stop. Well, this is a good, you know, the Miami defense. You want to stop the Colts. You want to play field position. Make it easy for your offense. You got them backed up. It does limit the play calling of an offense when they're coming out of their own end zone. Second and seven for Manning from the four. To the 10, to the 15, 17-yard line, first down. 13-yard pickup for Edron James. Brian Walker finally corralled the Indy running back. With about 4.20 to play here in the first quarter, we welcome those of you who watched Tampa Bay beat the Buffalo Bills, Greg Gumbel, Phil Sims, Armin Katayan here at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis, where the Colts have jumped on top of the Miami Dolphins by a 7-0 score. The line of scrimmage, the 16-yard line of the Indy Colts. James on the carry again. Cuts it back and gets up to about the 19-yard line. Earlier in the first quarter, the only score of this game came from 27 yards out. Manning and a great catch in the end zone by Marvin Harrison. So the clock continuing to move up now on three and a half minutes to play here in the first quarter. Movement up front. Marcus Pollard may have been the one to move for the Colts. Jim Morris still Ball talking start. with Terrence Williams. <laughs> offense, five yards, repeat second down. Well, sometimes you got to drive that point, you know, to get it home, you got to take about three or four discussions. So he's not letting, letting Terrence Wilkins off the hook too easy. But Pretty you know, well. Greg, looking at this Miami defense, they struggled last year against yeah, Indianapolis' right. offense. Today, they're going to have a different form of attack they're going to be very conservative no blitzing and try not to give up those big plays Harrison a little movement Manning overthrows Edwin James out in the flat incomplete it'll be third and 12 Marvin Harrison is the guy in the spotlight today and has been all week long because uh, well the fans and the writers say you know your production has fallen off in recent weeks and Marvin says well I'm just going to go out there and just get it done against this Miami defense today. Well, what did Peyton Manning say to us uh, yesterday? He goes, you know, it's Marvin. He's a pain in the rear end. But he said it with a smile because when you don't throw the ball to wide receivers of his, of his caliber, you know, they're going to get upset. They think they're always open, and they tell the quarterback that. So in Marvin Harrison's case, he usually is. From the shotgun on third and 12. Manning on the move, looking, and he's going to keep it. Puts it back and gets the first down. I'll bet 60,000 people were looking for Peyton Manning to run out of bounds. Instead, he cuts inside and picks up the first down. Well, you know what? He might be one of those 60,000 people. He's thinking as he's going around the corner, nobody's open, and everybody down the field is covered. Trace Armstrong goes inside, allows Peyton Manning to get to the outside, and right there, Cuts it back inside and picks up a big first down. Left Brian Walker standing on the sideline. James stumbles in the backfield, picks himself up and stumbles forward for another yard. Tim Bowens will get credit for the tackle in a one-yard loss. Uh, Tim Bowens, that's interesting. Him down on the ground with Edron James. What did Tim Bowens and Daryl Gardner tell us last night? That Edron James can talk as much trash or whatever you want to call it out on the field as anybody, and the Colts going without a no-huddle offense right here. On second and 11. Cornerbacks up tight on the wide receiver. 
Manning to James. And James out across the 30, out the 34, 35 yard line. A pickup of eight, and it'll be third and three. Greg, you, you said something. The Colt wide receivers, a lot of movement today watching as he lines up. Why they're going to do this little short motion, just a little bit. Did you notice just that those few steps, how Patrick Sertain backed off about another yard or two once the receiver moved? So Tom Moore put that in because he does not want those defensive backs from Miami up on the line of scrimmage beating up his receivers. They're up there again on third and three. Manning flips it out to James. James trying to shake the tackler. Gets close to first down yardage, but he appears to be a little short. Zach Thomas making the stop. Well, let's see where they spot this one. This is going to be close. Well, this is going to be, we're going to have a measurement on this one. It's close. Zach Thomas, we're kind of surprised to see him back because when we saw Zach a week ago, he said, well, it may be another couple of weeks before I get to play again. But he's had that high ankle sprain, a severe High ankle sprain. Got some new shoes on today there. Oh, they look nice, don't they? They're pretty. Pat Boone would be jealous. <laughs> nice and white and shiny. That's short. Interesting call here. I'm not sure he'll punt it. Well, he just looked at Tom Moore and said, go for it. Now, see, this is a break. You know, I hear this all the time when I listen to talk radio, which I should know better, but I listen <laughs> to it. Oh, Jim Moore, he's so conservative. But I have not I have not thought that's been the case since he's come to Indianapolis. This offense is wide open. Their defense is wide open. They're willing to try anything. So Jim Moore, he knows when to take a gamble. And this is one time I think it's appropriate. The Colts' fourth down efficiency is second best in the National Football League. And this will just continue what has started in this game. The Colts off to a good start. Don't grind it to a halt on a fourth and two or three inches. Let your offense try to pick it up. James behind Manning. Well, Manning prides himself on getting the defense to move. Yeah. There are an awful lot of people who moved on that. The Colts went into a shift. 18 offense, five yards, repeat fourth down. Peyton, tried to, Peyton Manning tried a hard count, almost got him to move, and then they had a double shift on but they did it so fast, I don't think this would be legal anyway. Watch it. Well, Peyton Manning does his, it does the old hit count, moved his head. And both tight ends, Marcus Pollard and Ken Dilger moved back. That is illegal. That is unsportsmanlike conduct, deceiving the defense if you move too fast. There's no deception allowed in football. That's right. Jeff Ogden is deep. Oh, look at this punt from Hunter Smith. Ogden from his nine. To about the 20 yard line. 58 yard punt and 11 yard return as time winds down here in the first quarter, which has been dominated by the Indianapolis Colts. Peyton to Harrison for a touchdown. Seven back to Indianapolis, Greg Dumble, Phil Sims. You cannot say how much the importance of this game is in the AFC East with the teams that are involved here and the New York Jets looking uh, looking on from New York. I could say how much, how much. <laughs> this is an important game for both teams, and we, we really could get the feeling from both of them last night and yesterday, the tension and how badly they do want to win. J.J. Johnson doesn't get very much on the handoff from Heward. I mean, Dave Wanstead walked into our room last night he walked in, sat down, and he just went through the litany of things about this game, and he walked out. I said, do you think he's a little fired up? Is the coach ready? If you've just recently joined us here in Indianapolis, this is what happened in the first quarter, and as we said, the Colts clearly dominating play early on. Second and nine. The pitch for Johnson. Johnson doing a little dancing, but in the end, only picks up a couple on the play. Bernard Holsey. I tell you what, you think it's not loud in the dome here at Indianapolis? That time, Damon Heward gets quick snap by Tim Ruddy, and nice job of staying with it and picking up the snap. 
Neil Damon Hewitt telling us last night. He said, yeah, I imagine the Colts are going to come after me a little bit, especially after they watched last week. So, but he also saw the Jets rush just three guys and drop eight off the line in passing situations, and he would look for that today as well. Here comes the blitz. Hewitt throws, far side, incomplete, intended for Tony Martin, number 80. Mike Peterson, the linebacker, was in on Heward. Well, Mike Peterson, he's everywhere. Number 52 coming up through the inside. What a job. Gets knocked down and just scoots along the ground for five yards to make Damon Heward throw just a little bit early and makes him off target. Matt Turk, who with the help of a bounce and a neglected fair catch, got off a 70-yard punt last time. It's off a pretty nice one here. Wilkin. Oh, you bet he'll catch this one from the 23. 30. Up the sideline. And finally brought down in Miami territory at about the 42 or 43 yard line. A 53 yard punt, a 36 yard return. Great field position for the Colts when we come back. Oh, heck. Corey's out of music again. Stupid move, Corey. This is Mac. His newfangled hip zip digital audio player holds a whole CD on each pocket zip disc for as little as 10 bucks. Mac girl. is a genius. Love hip zip, pocket zip, zip it. Its ancestors knew the grit of the sand at Daytona, where a mile measured the length of your nerve. It is not meek, it is not humble. It is what happens when you take the soul of the past and meld it with the best of the new. Chrysler 300M, the most powerful V6 sports sedan in its class. Now, during the Chrysler holiday sale, lease the 300M for $369 a month. That snowball is a great way to tell customers Staples has technology gifts. Greetings, um, handhelds make terrific gifts. So do digital cameras. Nice price. Excuse me, could you tell me about the Scannerfax copier? No. But I want to get it for my brother. Get him a cell phone. No, he really wants one of these. He can't have her. I love her. What? No, no, no. <laughs> weeping, weeping. It's okay. We found just someone else. Oh. For technology gifts they really want, it's Staples. Kentucky heads into Tar Heel territory to face Joe Forte and North Carolina as two of the nation's top teams jumpstart NCAA basketball on CBS. I'll be telling you which teams are headed uptown and which teams are headed downtown. I'll tell you why he's wrong. I want you to remember, coming up on the NASDAQ.com halftime report, Jim Nance, Mike Ditka, Jerry Glanville. We'll get you caught up on scores and highlights. The NASDAQ.com halftime report. Cure to throw on first down. Far side down the sideline. It's out of bounds intended for Tony Martin. Let's just keep you advised that we are ever cognizant of the news of the day taking place as regards the election and campaign 2000. And things will be happening throughout the day. And Dan Rather and CBS News standing by in New York to keep you updated. And we will go to them as soon as the news warrants. I used so some really big words in there. Yeah, you did. I was impressed. You're right. Second and ten. Six years in college to help you do that. J.J. <laughs> Johnson, right side. Trying to get a block on the outside. Gets across the 20 to about the 22 and a half, 23 yard line. You know, I got to say, Greg, I'm a little surprised by Miami's offense. Just listening to Damon Heward last night and the coach Dave Wanstead. There's Chan Gailey, the offensive coordinator. They felt so good about what they were going to do today to this Colts defense. I thought they would be a little more diversified. But look at Aronde Gadsden outside. You want to have a good running game? Your wide receiver better do a good job of blocking down the field. Cured and the Dolphins go with five wide receivers. On third and four. Quick pass. That's complete and dropped in his tracks is Leslie Shepard well short of a first down. 
Well, Damon Heward said, you know, whether no matter who's been the quarterback, and it's been Jay Fiedler, but he says we've won by being efficient and by playing smart, and he didn't expect to change in that today. Yeah, that is that is uh, a good tact against most teams in this league. Your defense, though, that's putting a lot of pressure on Miami's defense today because this Colts offense, it's like nothing Miami has seen all year long. It pressures you every time it has the ball. Turk. Another one higher than it is deep. Bouncing inside the 45 and out of bounds. So it'll be Peyton Manning and the Colts offense once again after a 33-yard punt. We'll be right back. PBS is sponsored by Circuit City. Circuit City, imagine that. And by Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. 10.51 to play here in the first half. Neither team has been able to register a first down here in the second quarter. After the Colts were on fire in the first quarter and came very close to scoring another Manning to Marvin Harrison touchdown right. a few moments ago. You. From the 44-yard line, James. Tripped up at about the 45, fumble forward to the 48. Zach Thomas in on the tackle for the Dolphins. Zach Thomas is back. And Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator, says, when you play this defense, there's so many weapons. But the one guy you've got to block somehow is Zach Thomas. Of course, that's easily said, hard to do, because he happens to lurk behind Daryl Gardner and Tim Bowens. Hard to get up to the linebacker when you got to fight through those two big guys. Run play has been pretty even for the Colts so far. We give it to James again. And James doesn't reach midfield. Gets about the 49. Jason Taylor and Zach Thomas again converging. And now, let's take you to New York and to Dan Rather for this campaign 2000 update. It's just after 5 p.m. here in the East. The deadline for Florida counties counting and recounting presidential votes to submit their final official numbers to the Florida Secretary of State. She is expected to certify the winner of Florida's 25 electoral votes sometime after 6 p.m. Eastern time this evening. The latest unofficial count from news sources indicates Texas Governor George Bush may be leading Vice President Al Gore by about 454 ballots. No matter who Harris declares the winner tonight, the battle for the White House is not over. Both sides have court challenges pending, including one the U.S. Supreme Court will hear on Friday. We'll be back on the air when the Florida Secretary of State says what she's going to do. We'll have a lot more on 60 Minutes. Dan Rather, CBS News Election Headquarters in New York, and now back to the game. He did a little of that series. They, start, they slow down the Indianapolis offense. Back at the RCA Dome, Tom Moore looks on, and Hunter Smith to kick it away. Jeff Ogden is deep for the Dolphins. Fair catch called for, and made at about the 16-yard line. 34-yard punt, no return. We'll take a timeout and come right back. hard to tear yourself away from Circuit City's new entertainment zone. It's got an expanded selection of the hottest new digital technology, like lots of digital and 35 millimeter cameras you can try out, a cool interactive video game department, the latest PC software and upgrades, plus exciting MP3 products and more. Honey, don't make me come back there. I gotta go. Come see the all new entertainment zone at Circuit City. Get enough football? Grab a Miller Lite and any time is Miller time. Go, 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 go! Oh yeah, that's the first down. Woo! Way to read the D. Yeah. That's what I'm talking All about. Right. Can't get enough football? Grab a Miller Lite and any time is Miller time. Who's calling these plays? Put in a backup! It was a gathering of the world's most noted biologists, setting out to harness the power of the human gene. Out of it grew Biogen, one of the world's premier biopharmaceutical companies, honored for medical advances, acclaimed for industry leadership. With record sales and a stream of new products coming online, Biogen today ranks with the global leaders. 
Where do you find the companies who are defining the future? Exactly. NASDAQ, stock market for the digital world. To defend an admiral accused of war crimes, harm takes on the Navy's top brass. If you get cute, I will cut you off at the knees. All new JAG, CBS Tuesday. The line of scrimmage for Damon Heward and the Dolphins is the 16-yard line, and the average starting position hasn't been too far away from that. They're on 19. First down Miami. J.J. Johnson, Rob Conrad in the backfield. This is Johnson. Shakes a tackle at the line of scrimmage. The ball has been blown dead, blown down at about the 21-yard line. Tyrone Poole covering a ball that is not a fumble. Let's take another look. Well, it's the first time today I've seen the Dolphin line push back Indianapolis's defensive line, and it is a fumble, but it doesn't matter. We heard the whistle from the officials. Let's listen to here, see if we can hear it. That is a whistle. Premature, but a whistle nonetheless. Second and five. Out to the 24-yard line, Johnson again. And Mike Peterson in on yet another tackle. We remind you, for the most complete NFL coverage, including game-by-game -game analysis and potential playoff scenarios, click on NFL at cbs.sportsline.com. Jim Morrow is telling us Friday. No, yesterday. Yes, yesterday. <laughs> that he wants to see his defense flying around all over the place and making plays because it's not an outstanding difference-making defense, Yeah, but they have to hold their own. That's right. They got to win with emotion and just maybe hustling and trying harder than the team they're playing against. Johnson straight ahead and has enough for the first down. To the 33-yard line, and again, Mike Peterson in on the stop. Well, you know, that's... you. Greg, you talk about the Colts. They just don't have a difference maker on defense. But this guy, Mike Peterson, 52, as he gets in on the tackle, he's trying to be one of those players and probably has the capabilities of being one of those because he has instincts, he knows where the football is going to be, and he has tremendous speed. So he can make some plays that, that can force turnovers by the offense. First down, a little more breathing room for Hewitt. Going to keep it on the ground with Johnson. Tries to break it outside, twists back, and may have picked up. No, no gain at all. It'll be second and ten. Now, when you just try to line up like the Dolphins are doing and think you're just going to run the ball down on the Colts, well, I don't know if you can do that. I think the one thing that they do very well, and Jim Moore even said this, if you just line up a, conven a conventional offense with two backs and try to run it at us, we're pretty good at stopping that. The Colts have problems when you spread them across the field, start throwing the football and create gaps. That's when teams have good success against their defense. Johnson has 31 rushing yards. The rest of the Miami offense has just two yards. Hewitt keeps. Pulls it down. Now goes deep. And almost intercepted. Knocked down by Tyrone Poole. The pass intended for Tony Martin, number 80. Well, Damon Hewitt threw that football a long way. Well, that was good defense by the Colts. They're trying to go down the middle of the field. He was covered. Then he throws it late to the outside to Tony Martin. And Tyrone Poole in perfect position. Just doesn't come up with the catch. First long ball of the day. From Hewitt, third and ten. Miami receivers, wide receivers today. One catch for a total of one yard. Play clock down to one. He got it off. Hewitt over the middle, incomplete. Number 84, Leslie Shepard crossing the field, and they'll have to kick it away. Well, that tells you a lot about their team, I think, Greg, and especially today. One catch by the Miami wide receivers uh, so far, and the Colts, the weakness of this team and the defense, the secondary, they cannot take advantage of it. Now, you look at Matt Turk's numbers there, and Dave Wanstatt said, Matt Turk has to have a big day for us because field position will be so important. 
He wants Peyton Manning to have all the yardage he can to make before he scores touchdown. There's a terrific kick by Turin. From the 17-yard line, Terrence Wilkins cuts it inside, got tripped up by number 51, Tommy Hendricks, the rookie out of Michigan. 55-yard punt, 13-yard return, and the Colts are back on offense. It's seeking out the best of the best, believing they will reach their goals. It's concentrating on companies that exhibit sustainable earnings growth. It's believing in a winning philosophy that can achieve solid results. The American Century Growth Fund. It's what we call American confidence. American Century Investments. Contact us or your investment professional. Need sports equipment? Go to MVP.com. All the best gear, all the best brands, and insight to help you play your best. And right now, save up to 50% at our holiday sale. MVP.com. Gear up for sport. This weekend at Zales, the diamond store, this exquisite six-carat diamond line bracelet is just $9.99 at Zales stores nationwide or shop online at Zales.com. Look! Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Ellie's renting again. And Enterprise picked her up again. She said Enterprise picks her up free. Free? Free. Now that makes renting easy. Mm -hmm. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Friday, fugitive Richard Kimball will become the hunter because sometimes the best defense is a good offense. You can't kill me! The fugitive. Then, these investigators don't just solve crimes. I want prints, I want film, I want everything. They restore lives. Evidence only knows one thing, the truth. CSI, after the fugitive, CBS Friday. Well, things went, went very well on the first possession for Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator of the Colts. Last three haven't been as successful from the 30-yard line. Harrison in motion. Manning throws a slam the other way to Jerome Payton. And it'll be a pickup of about five. It'll be second and five. And I'm watching the Colts. I want to see if they get in a huddle. They are. And, you know, the offensive coordinator, Tom Moore, we have a chance to talk to him all the time when we do games. Just to give you a little bit here. His ritual on Sundays, it was a 4-15 game. He was here at the stadium today at 10-30. He says, I only feel good when I get to the stadium. Otherwise, I'm nervous when I'm not here. Manning pulls it down, now throws incomplete. The penalty marker is down. And the penalty is on number 63, Jeff Saturday, the center. Yeah, he was downfield. It was a screen play. It was diagnosed by the Miami defense. That's why Jeff Saturday was caught down the field. So Ron Blum will give us the official call. Number 63 and number 78 were illegally downfield. Five yards, repeat second down. So it'll be second down and 10. You know, it, it was funny, Phil, when he said that he's been here since then. He, he's got to have the keys to the place. He, he opened the doors. Greg, he walks the halls. He's like, you know, he walks around just waiting for the game, but he gets his thoughts all straightened out, what he's going to call once the game gets started. Manning waits, 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 now moves out of there. Rolling left, throwing incomplete. Intended for Edward James. It's going to be third and ten, and there's a flag down at the 43 yard line. Yeah, it looks like it might be a push off against the Colts. Well, the initial call is pass interference. Pass interference, 80 offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. 80 is Terrence Wilkins. Well, he was just trying to separate from a defensive back. Peyton Manning, nobody open down the field. The last two series, it looks like finally Miami has settled in. 
They know they got a feel for this Indianapolis Colts offense, the speed and the play actions, and they're starting to cover those receivers a lot better. Second and 20. Quick pass, and that's Wilkins, and that play won't go anywhere. That's, in, you know, did everybody at home, could you hear the, the Miami defense going, look out for the wide receiver screen? Number 73, Adam Meadows is still down on the field. Here comes the wide receiver. It's Wilkins going to come underneath. And he comes underneath, and it's good reaction by Miami's defense. They knew it was coming, so they stop it for no gain. Adam Meadows still down on the field, and will take a timeout. 4.39 to play in the first half. No matter what you need, you can count on dependable, long-lasting Chevy trucks. Now, make your money count on a 2001 Chevy Silverado half-ton extended cab with as low as 1.9% APR financing, giving you 2607 in average finance savings. That's 1.9% APR. So make your money count during the year-end event at your local Chevy dealer now. Announcing a breakthrough in pizza technology. A pizza inside a pizza. To demonstrate how much we can pack inside Pizza Hut's new insider, we're going to take these four giant sumos and pack them inside this photo booth. How cozy. How do we get it all in? Well, we took one thin crust with six cheeses, sealed it with another crust, and even more cheese. And that's the amazing new Insider Pizza, all for just $9.99. Say cheese. The Insider Pizza from Pizza Hut, another one of the best pizzas under one roof. The pomp, passion, and pride. For over a century, these two teams have been battling it out on the field. The 101st Army-Navy game, next Saturday on CBS. Well, Adam Meadows, the fourth-year tackle out of Georgia, is still down on the field. And take a look at what happened to him. Trace Armstrong was the defender rushing for Miami. Here he is, number 73, the right tackle. Trace Armstrong you could see his right knee as he went down to cut him for the screenplay to get him out of the way. It's, hits him right in the head. And Meadows really has not moved much since we last left you. We'll take another time out with 439 to play. Six weeks before one of the biggest games of my life, I felt a strange pain in my chest. What my doctor found was my toughest opponent yet. Three of my arteries were more than 90% blocked. After recovering from surgery, lowering my high cholesterol became more important than football. Later, I was fortunate enough to coach my team in the biggest game of the season. That's the kind of play we need. Along with a healthy diet and regular exercise, taking Zocor every day helped significantly lower my total cholesterol. Zocor is a prescription medication and is not right for everyone, including women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant, or people with liver problems. Your doctor may do blood tests to check for liver problems because serious side effects can result. Tell your doctor about any muscle pain or weakness you experience while on Zocor and about any medicines you are taking. When diet and exercise are not enough, talk to your doctor about Zocor. Take care of yourself. It's your future. Be there. Samsung joyfully introduces the world as you make it, where our digital technology has one job to make life more fun. We want to thrill you, connect you, charm you, satisfy you, and delight you. Everyone's invited. To the Samsung Digital Experience. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by GMC. From professional-grade people come professional-grade trucks. 
Zocor. Talk to your doctor about Zocor today. And by priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Welcome back. Waverly Jackson has replaced Adam Meadows, who was listed as questionable for today with a knee injury. Missed a couple of days of practice, but he did start. And now is sidelined with what appeared to be a blow to the head. We'll keep track of his progress. Meanwhile, on third down, Manning down the middle. Incomplete intended for Ken Dilger, and a marker flies. Dilger down the middle, and it appeared Jerry Wilson, number 24, was the man running along with him. Well, I was watching the coverage down the field. I did not see the interference. Of course, I'm not as close. My opinion doesn't count. Dave Wanstead well, I'm, you know, throwing what, his opinion in. What could the conference be about? Well, it is a conference of major proportions. Here's Ron Blum. There's no infraction on the play. The ball was already by the receiver before he was grabbed. Well, apparently some, well, let's watch Ken Dilger as he goes down the middle. Jerry Wilson, nice fake out, comes up the field, has a little bit of an angle. Oh, my. Well, it's not, <laughs> you know, he does put the arm on him. There's no question. I did not see that. The left hand. On the arm, doesn't let the arm come up. That would be pass interference. Well, the uh, Indianapolis Colts coaches are just to our left, and they are, they are not exactly what you call a calm bunch of gentlemen right about now after they've seen the replay. Well, you know, it goes back to this grade. Your first instinct is usually right. So when they threw the flag, they were, they were right. What a kick by Hunter Smith. Jeff Ogden back to the 20. 25, 30, breaking free and across the 35 to about the 39-yard line. 65-yard punt and a 25-yard return, and we'll be back. Oh, he looks so handsome. Mommy's big man. You're such a big boy. I'm going to give you a big kiss. 492 saved buying Spike a holiday sweater online. 642 overpaid on shipping. Oh, you look so precious. If your gifts aren't being sent priority mail, you're probably paying too much. So make sure to ask for it. Fly like an eagle. Her hand isn't ordinary when she's the one you love. To slip an extraordinary gift onto it, come to Kay Jewelers. This Christmas, give her Kay's three-stone ring with diamonds hand-selected for exceptional beauty. Every kiss begins with Kay. K Jewelers. No matter what you need, you can count on dependable, long-lasting Chevy trucks. Now, make your money count on a 2001 Chevy Silverado half-ton extended cab with as low as 1.9% APR financing, giving you 2607 in average finance savings. That's 1.9% APR. So make your money count during the year-end event at your local Chevy dealer now. Thank you for calling the Speedy Glue Helpline. Your call will be answered in 82 minutes. Not going anywhere for a while? <coughs> Grab a Snickers. That ought to hold you. So what do you say? Nobody! 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 nobody, 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 nobody. That's a bad call. Uh, somebody better figure out how to run the ball. They were gonna <laughs> knock you in the mouth. Yeah. You talk about special teams in field position. Twan Russell, nice block. Arturo Freeman, boom, another good block. Miami finally has the football out near the 40-yard line. It's, uh, you don't have to worry about field position. You can open up your offense. Their best starting position of the day. 401 to play in the first half. Hewitt to throw. Now he pulls it down and takes off and slides down at about the 40-yard line. A gain, uh, no gain on the play. Last four times the Dolphins have had the football. They've had to kick it away, and they don't stay on the field very long either. Now you see very few yards, and 
I haven't seen the opportunities for the plays to be made by the quarterback, and the running game has been pretty tough. They did pick up one first down. Second and ten. Not much deception so far by the Miami offense. Rob Conrad is flanked out to the far side, and he's in motion now. The pitch to J.J. Johnson. Johnson. A pickup of about a yard. It'll be third and nine. Jeff Burris making the stop. Well, Jeff Burris, he's up near the line of scrimmage. The one thing the Colts, they play their corners up, and if you do that, that means they, they must be good tacklers anytime a, a running play comes to the outside, and Jeff Burris did a good job that time. Jeff Burris with a couple of interceptions, returned one for a touchdown this year. From the 40-yard line, third and nine. Blitz, Hewitt throws, complete. Tony Martin midfield, first down. Penalty marker is down where Hewitt went down. And that was Jeff Burris in on the quarterback. That was a nice blitz by the Indianapolis Colts. And what a good reaction. First the foul rough on the passer. And a really good reaction by Damon Hewitt. Here comes foul. Burris on the outside. Well, what that penalty is, now you're not allowed to hit the quarterback and take him and then fall on top of him. Watch Jeff Burris. He hits him. Yeah, it wasn't the hit. It was driving drive him down. Driving him into the ground. You cannot do that. And, you know, when I, that's one of the few times I've ever seen it by a defensive player besides a defensive lineman, usually a, a defensive back not big enough to get a quarterback in that position. So the line of scrimmage, the 34-yard line of the Colts, first down Miami. Johnson looking for running room on the right side and finding none. Bernard Holsey, Dwight Hollier. After a gain of two, it'll be second and eight. Dwight Hollier, eight years a Miami Dolphin. Says it would be kind of strange going out there playing against these guys, but you got to do what you got to do. Two-minute warning. We'll be right back to Indy right after this. First time today the Dolphins have been in Indianapolis territory. J.J. Johnson across the 30, pushing the pile forward to about the 27-yard line. Well, that was something we haven't seen today. They moved the pile for the first time really all day long that time. So let's watch Tim Ruddy inside. Mark Dixon, good job. Kevin Donnelly. Richmond Webb right in there. Oh, yeah, just good hard running. Gets an extra three yards. Minute and a half to play. Clock is moving. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. That's Denson in motion. Here comes the blitz. Quick pass to Denson. This side. Inside the 20. Lost the football. Picked up by the Dolphins. And down at the 15-yard line is Aronde Gadsden. That's a tough way to get a first down. Well, watch. It's a screen play. It's a blitz. This time they got the right call on against the defense and Autry Denson Autry Denson fumbles Aronde Gadsden picks it up it's a good thing he's there to recover it Mark Thomas number 90 defensive lineman comes in causes the fumble but it cannot be advanced it has to come back to where Autry Denson <laughs> fumbled it and that's like the teacher getting ready to scold the pupil that time it's like dad's angry first yeah. down from the 19 Hewitt, plenty of time, throws over the middle, complete inside the 15 is J.J. Johnson. And stop. <laughs> hey. You know, what? Mom must be so proud. Hey, you know what? Your body looked like that, you'd paint it blue too. <laughs> but no, you know what? Hey, be a fan, come and let it go. Good oh. for that guy. Have some fun when you come to these games. But then you spend the rest of the week getting paid off. <laughs> Miami's red zone offense tied for fourth in the NFL. Second down and two. Johnson across the 10 and is close to a first down. 
Chad Bratsky in on the stop. Clock continues to move under a half minute. And now stop the 29 seconds with a timeout by the Dolphins, and they are out of timeouts. 29 seconds to play in the first half. We'll be right back. Never once did your car ask you for jewelry or flowers. Never once did it ask you if it looks fat or did it get mad at you for leaving the seat up. Your car always gives you exactly what you want. Doesn't it deserve something special in return? Defense trying to fire up the Indianapolis crowd with 29 seconds to play. Miami is out of timeouts. The ball just inside the 10 yard line. And it is third and about half a yard for a first down. Eight play, 51 yard drive for the Dolphins. Conrad in motion. Johnson diving and doesn't get there. What a stop by Chad Bratsky. Trying to get the field goal unit onto the field. They have no more timeouts. Down to eight, seven. The kick by Olindo Mare from 28 yards out is good. So the special teams unit did a terrific job of getting onto the field and getting the three points through the uprights. And we'll take a timeout just before halftime. We're getting onto the field and getting the field goal. Yeah, well, they had time during the timeout, Greg, to talk about the situation. If we don't make the third down conversion, run the field goal unit on. Plenty of time to execute it. They did it easily. And I'm sure Dave Weinstead, he looks up the scoreboard, 7-3. to three. He likes what he sees because he withstood that first furious challenge by the Colts offense, only gave up seven points. You know, it's, it's changed the game. I think his defense has finally caught on how to play Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison, and now he's just got to hope his offense can open it up. As explosive as this Indianapolis Colts team has been, particularly at home, any coach will take just seven. Little squib kick, bouncing, and picked up by Ken Dilger, and he will hit the deck, and that will do it for the first half. It began on an offensive note by the Indianapolis Colts, but the rest of the first half has been pretty good defense on both sides. Let's go down to Armin. But Greg, I'm with Coach Mora, who just seems right now to be searching out something that's going on in the field, so I'll throw it back up to you. See, because Tim, Kim Dilger caught the ball. Which is when the clock began. And he gave himself up immediately. They're saying the clock has two seconds Yeah, they only still lost one second. You know, the, the, it doesn't start. The clock doesn't start until an offensive player touches the ball. He immediately went down on his knee, stopped the play, gave himself up. Watch what happens. Look at the clock. Starts now. He's down. That's what they blew the they blew well, the play dead. They blew the play dead early because he hadn't been touched. Didn't have to be touched. He gave himself up. You can just give yourself up like that and you can. it down? Yes, you can. That'd save a lot of injuries for a lot of quarterbacks <laughs> around the league, wouldn't it? We have now come to the end of the first half, and let's go down to Armin. Greg, we'll try this again. Coach, that last stand by your defense certainly typified the effort we saw in the first well, half. The defense has really been playing hard. The whole team's been playing hard. We've had a couple of opportunities with pretty good field position. We haven't. I thought they played better. If Peyton Manning, if Marvin Harrison catches that long pass to the end zone, it's 14 to nothing. That would change this game completely around because Miami's offense then would be forced to, to be more aggressive, and they could have turnovers if they became too aggressive. So Miami dodged, a, I think, a big bullet when the Colts didn't score. Now they can try to play their type of game. However they have gotten to this point, they have to be buoyed by that first half. And they are on the short end of a 7-3 score, and they'll get the first ball, the football first here in the second half. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Ogden and Denson deep. Danny Kite kicks it away. This will be Denson about four or five yards deep in the end zone. 20, running room, 30, 40, 
just kite to beat steps inside and kite drags him down and there's a marker down back at the 35 yard line 57 yard return by Denson pending the penalty flag Well, that's going to move the football probably all the way back to the Miami 25. Special teams coach. The receiving team. Ten yards, first down. That's Trent Gamble, a uh, rookie out of Wyoming. And let's go down to Armin Katayan. Armin. Thanks, Greg. Talking to Coach Wansett, he said he's very pleased that his defense settled down. And then we started laughing. He goes, you know, we're just going to have to stick what we do in offense. He goes, we're just going to have to keep doing it, what we believe in, whatever that is. He said, and we're going to hope for a couple of turnovers to win this game. Not a great deal of confidence that his right. offense can score. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> that is great. You know, it really is. You know what? He knows what his team is, though. So uh, I think last week he made a comment to us. When he came in the room last night, they did the wrong thing last week. Damon Heward comes in for Jay Fiedler, and he said, we stuck to the game plan. We kept it wide open. Damon Heward made some mistakes. you got to know your personnel. So he says, look, if we can't get it done, we'll just see if we can make a play somewhere along the line to give, our, give ourselves a chance to score. Heward, quick toss over the middle. That's complete to J.J. Johnson out of the backfield, and that's first close down. to a first down. Look at the halftime numbers. Well, nothing really jumps out there. 136 yards to 69. And actually, Miami got quite a few of those in their last little drive to kick the field goal. I think, Greg, the big thing is the pace of play, it really slowed down dramatically in the second quarter, and that really favors the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins having failed to register a touchdown in their last eight quarter. Johnson straight ahead. You know, this Miami running game is interesting to watch, if nothing else, but this is the kind of offense Jimmy Johnson wanted in all his years with the Miami Dolphins and never had it. Well, he, we, we talked about it last week. We had a few laughs. Of course, it's hard to keep plowing in there for two yards when you know you got Dan Marino as a quarterback. Now, Miami doesn't mind sticking it up in there. They run it about 30 times a game. It's not that they're great at it, Greg. They're just patient. They know they got the defense, so they remain very patient on offense. Second and six from the 40. On the ground with Johnson, penalty markers down. That's a pickup of about two on the play. And now let's check the flag. It's against the Colts. Your hands to the face. 38 defense, five yards, first down. Penalty is on Tyrone Poole. And look at those numbers that favor the Dolphins in the third quarter of play. Well, I, I would think when you look at those numbers, of course, you've got to say the defense has had a lot to do with that field position, helping out their offense, but also their offense coming out probably being a little more aggressive in the third quarters of games, and that's enabled them to score a little bit more. First down from the 45. Heward keeps, throws, has a bullet complete across midfield to Leslie Shepard to the 46-yard line, a pickup of eight on the play. Well, that's a nice play, a nice little play action by Damon Heward. What it does, it gives sec separation between the linebackers and the defensive back. You can see no linebacker in the way of Damon Heward and the wide receiver. That's why it makes it an easy throw and catch. Second and two. And Damon Heward getting a little offensive rhythm going here early in the second half for the Miami Dolphins. All right, baby. All right, okay. He's going to keep and throw deep down the far sideline. It is incomplete. Leslie Shepard battling Jeff Burris for the football. Well, nice, nice play by Jeff Burris. Second and two. The Dolphins do. And out and up, Leslie Shepard, like faking a 10-yard out. Jeff Burris didn't even come close to, to biting on it. That's why he's in such good position to knock the pass down. As I watched that play develop, Phil, the receiver was never open on this play. But it's Miami trying to catch a defense off guard. 
to get a big play, and there's Mike Shula. Quarterback coach, a little upset. Third and two. Cured, throws the slant, complete inside the 35-yard line to Arande Gadsden. The line of scrimmage will be the 33, and that's more than enough for another Miami first down. Nice throw by Damon Hewitt and Aronde Gadsden. He's a wide receiver. He'll come from the left side. Here he comes in there. Right over the top of the linebacker, Mike Peterson. Gadsden uses his body. He's a big receiver. Not going to run away from defensive backs. What he does, look at him. He uses his body. Keeps his body in front of Tyrone Poole. That's why he makes the catch. Aronde Gadsden's first catch of the day. First down, 33-yard line for the Dolphins. Cured to throw again. Sets up the screen. Johnson trying to dip outside the 30 to about the 25-yard line. Dwight Hollier, Mike Peterson combining for the stop after an 8-yard pickup. Yeah, now the Dolphins' offense is in rhythm. And, Greg, we talked about the last play of Rondé Gatson, there he is, number 86, taking a breather. And when you see him go over the middle and use his body and make those catches, you understand why after meeting him last night because he's a big receiver, 6'2", 215, but the size of his hands, the, his hands are so big, there's no reason for him to ever drop a pass when he's thrown close to him. Conrad in motion, the pitch. Johnson. This time he can't turn the corner. Chad Cota coming up from his safety position to make the stop. Now Dave Wanstead, and you mentioned this earlier, made special note to us last night. He said Autry Denson, J.J. Johnson don't get as much credit as he feels they deserve. Well, he thought they'd be a big part of the day's game, but hasn't really happened so far. They haven't done much on offense to, I'm not going to sit back and say he was right. Those running backs are ripping it up. That has not been the case. 43 yards rushing for the Dolphins today. Only 48 for the Colts. A big third and four. The give to Denson. Denson to the 25, the 20, inside the 20, and a first down. 11-yard pickup and a first down for the Dolphins at about the 13-yard line. Audrey the Denson, 17, right? watch Greg. He's the one guy that can get him. They get the guard out, blocks. Blevins, number 26, he misses the tackle. But all they knew they had to do that time, the Colts were playing pass. They blocked the one person that was covering Audrey Denson, allowed him to pick up the first down. Going on five and a half minutes, the length of this drive. Cured to throw. Inside the 15 to about the 11 is Leslie Shepard. And that's a five-yard gain. It'll be second and five. Well, what's happening to the Miami team now? They're just making plays. Watch this catch. Damon Hewitt throws the only place he can. Good catch by Leslie Shepard. Aronde Gadsden had a nice catch to keep the drive going. And Five out of six for 45 yards on the drive for Hewitt. Conrad and Johnson in the backfield. Shepard in motion. Johnson. To about the six. Cornelius Bennett in on the stop. And one of the things we're seeing here is something that we made reference to earlier about building confidence in Damon Hewitt in the Miami offense. Well, watch, watch this. They're going to fake the reverse. And watch Bernard Holsey, the defensive end. Watch how he comes up the field. He has to honor the reverse and look where J.J. Johnson cuts back, Greg. Something we're seeing a lot of teams in the National Football League do now. They're faking reverses because they can't block that backside guy in a running play, and it enables the runner to cut back and get some good yards. First and goal from the six-yard line. Johnson, right side. Behind the rookie right tackle, Todd Wade, and he's inside the five to about the three. Well, the Dolphins trying to get physical, trying to wear down the front. Watch Rob Conrad, 44. Here he comes across. Gets into number 56, Dwight Hollier. Allows the runner to get a few extra yards. And I was just sitting here laughing to myself about Dave Weinstead's description of his offense. Mike James would make a stick it in here. Cured looking for a receiver. It's batted down 
at about the two-yard line by Bernard Holsey. Third and goal. That might be one of the few today that Damon Hewitt has tried to force in. No, that was a good, he did the right thing, Greg. He looked at his first two receivers. Bernard Holsey just kind of stayed at the line of scrimmage and just knocked it down. Otherwise, it was going to be complete for about a one or two yard game. Third and goal. Johnson. Touchdown. Boy, that was a nice drive. What it was, the Dolphins made some plays physically, but it was good call, play calling by Chan Gailey. I'm thinking pass all the way. Chad Coda gets caught up inside. There's Chan Gailey, offensive coordinator, yes. And Dave Wanstead and the rest of the Miami Dolphins celebrating. On for the extra point, Olindo Mare. And the kick is good. On his way to the end zone, J.J. Johnson breaking tackles for his first touchdown of the season. And the Dolphins lead. The third quarter belongs to the Dolphins so far this year, outscoring the opposition 60-3. They take the opening kickoff of the second half and go seven minutes and 31 seconds. Mari's kick. Terrence Wilkins watches it bounce into the end zone and out of the end zone. So Peyton Manning. And the Indianapolis offense starts from the 20-yard line. Dave wants that uh, change is good. Yes, is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. Volkswagen, on the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. And by Nike Shocks, being thoroughly experienced and explained on Nike.com. Beginnings of the Christmas season in downtown Indianapolis and on the sideline, Damon Heward, Dave Wanstatt, as the Dolphins have grabbed a 10-7 lead. And now Manning and the Colts go back to work. Off the set, off the set. Kill, Marvin Harrison in motion. Manning looking downfield. Rose, Marcus Pollard across the 40 and out of bounds at about the 42 or 43 yard line. Knocked out by Brock Marion. That is the first first down for the Indianapolis Colts since about two minutes to play in the first quarter. Gonna fake go this way. Here's Marcus Pollard down at the bottom of your screen. He's gonna break to the outside. Not many teams run a play action to the right and throw back to the left. They caught Miami off guard. The Colts back to the line in a hurry at the 43. This is gonna be a run. Dilger on the move. The give is to Edger and James. James to the 45. And out to about the 48. And we get a check of what's going on with Jim Nance in New York. Jim. Well, things had been going so well for Ryan Leaf in the first half with two touchdown passes. He's thrown another one, but this one to the Kansas City Chiefs. Marcus Patton runs it back. And the Chiefs do not go for two. They kick the PAT. They're down one. Let's go back to you. All right, Jim. From the 48-yard line, second and five for the Colts. Manning, quick pass through the hands of Dilger. And it'll be third and five. Let's check in with Armin Katayan. Armin. You know, you know, Greg, it's interesting with Peyton Manning. We asked him what the biggest change was from his rookie year to today, and he said, you know what? I'm playing with complete confidence, without any doubt. And he traces it back to the conversation he had with his father that first year when the Colts went 13-3, and three, and he said, no matter what, don't lose your confidence, believe in yourself, and he has, and what we see here is maybe the best quarterback in the NFL. Back to you. Thanks, Armin. Third and five. He needs the 47-yard line of the Miami Dolphins for a first down. Throws incomplete. Past Dilger, who was the intended receiver, but it wasn't very close. Yeah, a little too quick for Ken Dilger. He's trying to get away from a defensive back. It's Jerry Wilson. It's not a great matchup, I don't think, for the Indianapolis Colts. I would attack Zach Thomas with Edron James in the passing game. Zach Thomas, to me, is slowing down. Looks like he's limping just a little, and I think you could take advantage of him in the passing game. Hunter Smith to kick it away. 
has boomed a couple so far today. Jeff Ogden deep at his own 10. Hunter Smith ran a fake against the New York Jets on a field goal. Drive this one out of there. Ogden will let it bounce. It bounces inside the five and goes into the end zone for the touchback, although. Well, now the officials say that that didn't reach the end zone. David Macklin had batted it back before it went across the goal line. So the line of scrimmage is going to be the five-yard line. We'll be back. You see this is knocked back in the field of play as it comes. Smart play by Sam Madison. He's going to pick it up and run it. Because it's been touched illegally by the punt team, the worst that can happen is it comes back to the 20, Greg. But the problem is the return team, what you've got to be careful about in this league is they pick it up. If there is a penalty against you and you fumble it, then the other team can keep the football. But that time... No penalty, so no bad repercussions for the Miami Dolphins. That would be a convergence of bad things all at once. From the 20-yard line, Heward and the Miami offense. And Heward to throw. Oh, what a great diving catch across the 30-yard line by Leslie Shepard. 14-yard pickup, terrific throw and terrific catch. Well, it is. It's almost the same play we saw the Indianapolis Colts run. Play action to the left, quarterback goes to the right, except they use a wide receiver, and what a catch by Leslie Shepard. Hey, the difference in the Dolphins in the first half and the second, they're just making some plays. That is three terrific catches we've seen so far in the second half by Dolphin wide receivers. Damon Hewitt, six of eight for 59 yards in this half. And back to the ground game with J.J. Johnson, and that one will get them nothing. Josh Williams, big rookie defensive tackle out of Michigan. You know, what a, Greg, you, there's Josh Williams. You look at Damon Hewitt, though, and he's he's really come on the second half doing well. We covered so many Dolphin games last year when he played, when Dan Marino was hurt, and he, he did a good job. He handled the offense really well. There's Jeff Burst, starting corner on the sideline. Looks to be a little pain. Second and nine. Hewitt sets up another screen. Johnson to the 40. Out to the 42, 43 yard line. Mike Peterson wraps him up there. Another good play call. Just They got the rhythm going now on offense. Guys are making plays, mixing it up real well. Chan Gailey, I said this last week, did my first Dolphin game of the year. If you're on defense against the Dolphins offense, you've got to be alert for some screen plays. And they got it. Picked out, Ellis Johnson had it, just couldn't come up with the tackle. Colt fans want a little defense here on third and two. Hewitt gonna throw for it, down the sideline, it is incomplete. Aronde Gadsden, the intended receiver, and Tyrone Poole with him. Aronde telling us last night, you know, if he gets out there with a shorter cornerback, he feels good about the quarterback just throwing it up there. Well, when you got about a five or six inch height advantage on the guy you're going against, I would feel good too. At that time, excellent coverage by Tyrone Poole. How about that day of kicking the football for Matt Turk, averaging 52 and a half yards? Short, short, High short. kick. Fair catch ball thrown by Wilkins, and he lets it bounce. And now it's picked up and run out of bounds at about the 20 yard line. Mustafa Muhammad was there to pick up the bouncing ball and prevent it going deeper. 3.52 to play. Edwin James, left side, following a block by Dilger, gets up about three, and it'll be second and seven. It's so tough to run against this Miami defense, I think. It's just hard to block the two big inside defensive linemen and when you can't block them, you see that number 54? He gets to run around. Look, nobody's really trying to block him. Ken Dilger finally comes around, tries to get in his way, but it's too late. You cannot get the Zach Thomas if he can't fight your way through about 650 pounds of defensive lineman in front of him. Manning the throw. Out to Edward James. 
making a move, looking for a first down, and he's got it. Ryan Walker ran him out of bounds, but not before he picked up eight yards in a first down. Boy, that is tough stuff. Nobody open down the field. Peyton Manning throws it to Edron James and Robert Jones. Watch it. Square up. He squares up. Doesn't matter. He just takes off and goes right around him. That is tough. Daryl Gardner told us last night he's looking forward to the challenge of people like Peyton Manning and Edron James. He considers James to be one of the best. He acts like a defensive lineman out there. In the trash talking mode. First down. And the way he plays, plays hard, plays tough. Manning throws up the middle. The dive incomplete intended for Jerome Payton, And we'll take a timeout and head back to Jim Nance in New York. Jim. All right. The Denver Broncos have taken the lead as it's Mike Anderson from 15 yards out. 17-14 Broncos at Seattle. Six minutes to go, third quarter. Back to Greg and Bill. All right, Jim. Well, that last time you saw Peyton Manning was upset because Payton is going down the middle, wide open, but never turned around and look. And finally, Manning just throws it, and Payton turns around too late to see it. James, left side, running room, still on his feet across the 40, close to a first down at the 42. Let's go back to that play with Jerome Payton. Well, let's just go back and look at it, Greg, just to see. They got him full. Look at Miami's linebackers turning, running. Nobody can pick up the receivers. That's the end. If Payton would have turned around earlier, it would have been a big game for, with the play-action pass. This is a draw play they've been running today. This has by far been their most successful run. Again, the defense thinks it's passed. They go up the field. Edron James comes underneath it. You see Edron James drag Zach Thomas that extra two yards. Enough for a first down. Tim Bowen says, you know, those four games that Thomas was out, we missed him making plays all over the field. Well, he's held up pretty well. I notice he's limping just a little, but still moving around well enough to make some tackles. And if I would think it would be a problem for him running, it would be in the passing game, and he has to make a sharp cut. First down from the 42. Harrison in motion, play fake, Manny, time, throws, almost intercepted. Brian Walker coming over and knocking it away. That is really good recognition by Brian Walker. Sam Madison has the receiver at first, Marvin Harrison, watch. All the way from the top, he comes across. Watch Brian Walker cut the pass off. He, now he diagnoses it. He knows he got a lot of ground to cover, reads it, and got in and made the play. See, Sam Madison says, I can't chase him across the formation. That's for the safety. Almost comes up the interception. Second and 10. James. Met at the 40-yard line by Daryl Gardner and Rich Owens. You know, a loss of two. Oh, I'm sorry, Greg. I want to go back to that play before, though. See, if they were, if Miami was not in the same division as the Colts and didn't play them twice a year, they would have had no chance of defense in that play because the safeties have been going, oh, what's going on? Everybody had been running everywhere, and Jerome Payton would have been wide open. But when you see it twice a year, you know how to defend it. You talk about it during the week. It gives you a much better chance on Sundays to stop it. Colts 0 for 5, their last five third down attempts. Manning pumps, throws, has his man. Out of bounds, just inside the 30-yard line, and a big first down for Indianapolis. Greg, you said it right. Manning pumps, and that little pump was just enough to make the defense stop. It makes one of them come up. They come up. Now it allows Terrence Wilkins to get behind. You see that? There it is. Made the corner come up. Now Brock Marion can't get over there quick enough to... Stop the pass. This is good for 32 yards. And a first down at the 29 of the Miami Dolphins. Hey, Terrence Shaw come up. Manning play fakes again. Throws it down the middle. Incomplete. Tipped by Brock Marion. The fans want a little interference. 
Well, if you've been watching this game today, this is the exact play they scored a touchdown on. But the difference is this time, the back safety away from the play, who's Brock Marion, comes all the way across and knocks it down. Fans saw the replay and saw the little bump. Brian Ball Harrison by Sertain. It's like Brian Walker, the other safety, got caught up inside again. But that time, Brock Marion, nobody to cover, comes all the way across the field, knocks it down. Also on this play, Sertain didn't go for the outside move by Marvin Harrison either. Edrin James gets tripped up and gets to about the 26 and a half yard line. Well, when you look at this game so far, 10 to 7, Indianapolis, not on the field a lot, but they have had about three or four chances for big plays. The difference is today they're just not making those plays down the field in the passing game. And there will not be another snap, I believe, before the quarter ends, although Manning is trying to get it off. One, zero, and no. That'll do it. That fourth quarter numbers. They've been down big in two games and made furious comebacks. That's one of the big reasons, Greg, for that plus 60 points in the fourth quarter. Third and eight. Manning gets rid of it, throws, complete. James inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Indianapolis. You know what? Not many times in the National Football League can you get a running back on a defensive back and say, this is a good matchup for the running back. Because, look, there's Jerry Wilson. He thinks he's in good position. But you see what Peyton Manning did? He makes Edron James turn around, catch the football, now the defensive back cannot make any adjustments to the ball while it's in the air. Now the fourth quarter, the last five games, the Miami Dolphins have just owned the opposition. Or rather, been outscored by the opposition. Manning throws, end zone, touchdown! For the second time today, Marvin Harrison on the receiving end. And the Colts are back on top. Boy, that was nice stuff. It was just a quick fake by Manning. It was just enough to allow Marvin Harrison to get open across the middle. And look at that bullet. Peyton Manning says, oh, you betcha. His touchdown total from the season now up to 26 is what he had each of the first two seasons that he's been in the NFL. Vanderjet for the extra point. It's good. The Colts, scoreless in the third quarter, put seven on the board here to start the fourth, and they grab a 14 to 10 lead. Kicking to Ogden and Denson. Bouncing, and picked up by Denson. 20, 25, 30, spinning out to the 36 yard line. 26 yard return, and on the sideline, Marvin Harrison intent on making an impact today. Two TD catches. This is not a photo, it's a digital image. And this is not a photo, it's a computer image. It's not a photo until you print it on jet print photo paper. So you print this on your inkjet printer? Whether you get images from a digital camera, scanner, photo CD, or email, jet print photo lets you print studio quality pictures at home. When you can get the look and feel of professional photos, why settle for anything less? Jet print photo, how digital photos are finished. What's going on? Hey. Wow, this is nice. But I thought Stacy said if you bought new tools, she gets a new dining room set. Yeah, she did. So where are the table and chairs? You're standing on them. <laughs> Fine woodworking tools from Bridget. Name proven by pros since 1923. Take our 12-inch compound miter saw. The best choice for deck building, remodeling, and finish work. Bridget. Buy them at the Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. What kind of a company are we? We're people like you. Our families are growing. We're buying new homes, enjoying a career, or looking beyond it. Yet, no matter where you are in life, it's important to plan for where you want to be. Talk to a financial advisor at First Union Securities, because the future has a way of arriving before you know it. NFL on CBS is sponsored by the all-new Honda Civic. Amazing but true. 
Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Jet Print Photo Paper. Our digital images are finished. It has been completely redesigned. So it is more powerful. Safer. Quieter. And more spacious. With ultra-low emissions and improved fuel economy. Introducing the all-new Civic from Honda. Amazing, but true. Why can't they park in the garage like everyone else? That snowball is a great way to tell customers Staples has technology gifts. Greetings, um, handhelds make terrific gifts. So do digital cameras. Nice price. Excuse me, could you tell me about the Scannerfax copier? No. But I want to get it for my brother. Get him a cell phone. No, he really wants one of these. He can't have her. I love her. What? No, no, no. <laughs> weeping, weeping. It's okay. We found just someone else. Uh oh. For technology gifts they really want, it's Staples. They mastered the biology of the immune system and pioneered a revolutionary way to treat disease. By modulating the body's processes, Immunex is meeting some of the great medical challenges of our time. A world leader in biotechnology, Immunex stays at the forefront through a major research and development commitment. Where do you find the companies that are creating the future of medicine? Exactly. NASDAQ, stock market for the digital world. That's not happiness to see me, is it? He was waiting for me. He knows. You got a box big enough to hold half a million dollars for killing my wife. Michael Douglas, Gwyneth Paltrow. That's not happiness to see me, is it? A Perfect Murder, Network Premier, CBS Wednesday. Tonight on CBS, what happens this evening in Florida could determine who the next president will be. Don't miss this 60 Minutes, followed by an all-new Touched by an Angel and the secret J.J. Johnson. And Johnson forward across the 35, and you'd have to say that running game has done fairly well against the Colts so far today. Well, it's done enough to keep them honest, Greg. Right. I don't know if it's done real well, but it's enabling the Miami Dolphins to keep the pace of the game the way they like it. They're down 14 to 10, and the... You know, most people didn't think you could hold this Colts offense to 14 points. So they're in good position midway through the fourth quarter. J.J. Johnson, 21 carries for 60 yards and a touchdown. Hewer going to throw this one. Throws over the middle. Incomplete. Leslie Shepard had it and had some yardage and room to run. Boy, that was a nice job by Damon Hewer. Watch. He hangs in there as long as he can stay in there. Gets hit. Falls down and Leslie Shepard. The pass coverage all got messed up in the middle of the field. He was wide open. Dolphins just one first down on their last two drives, looking to reach the 41 yard line and a first down here. 35. Down the sideline. Incomplete, lands out of bounds. Tony Martin, the intended receiver, and David Macklin, the rookie out of Penn State, stride for stride with him down the sideline. Good coverage by Macklin that time. No chance, nowhere to throw the football. Hewer did the right thing, played it safe, throw it out of bounds. I remember as far back as Mexico City where against the Pittsburgh Steelers, David Macklin was getting used and abused. He's come a long way since then. Preseason. Matt Turk, the kick. End over end. Wilkins, grab. Retreats. Gets a block. 30. Out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. Good job of returning the football. 39-yard punt. A 9-yard return. That's a lot of running by Terrence Wilkins for 9 yards. Recent history dictates close ball game between these two teams. In October, Miami won here in Indianapolis, 34-31. December the 5th, down in Miami, a Mike Vanderjat field goal as time ran out gave the Colts a 37-34 win. Yeah, you can see all that scoring. The difference here today is this Miami defense, it's better this year than it was last year. They have learned how to play this Colt offense a little better and that is 
be a lot more conservative. Don't go up there and challenge them. If you challenge them too much, you'll lose the battle. At the 35-yard line, the Colts start with their best field position of this half. And they'll start with Edgar and James, who dips outside across the 40 to the 43-yard line. What a quick move at the line of scrimmage by Edgar and James. Boy, that was, Greg. And again, we've said it a few times today, when you're going to run the ball against Miami, you've got to go off the tackles. You just can't go up inside. Look, he goes up, the, up inside, nothing there. Has to come all the way around the tight end. What a block by Marcus Pollard, number 81. Look at Ken Dilger, number 85, making a good block. When you go outside, your tight ends must make good blocks. Second and two, James again. This time he goes straight ahead, forward, and is close to a first down at the 45. Prior to that carry, Edrin James, with 19 carries for 88 yards. Looks like he picked up oh, another yard and a half or so, but, but look at that. Yeah, look at it, Greg. 42 to the left, 40 to the right. And look up. Well, they're smart. See, but they, a lot of these runs started up the middle and then broke out, so. That's Gardner and Bowen's territory in the middle. It is. It's just impossible to run at the middle of Miami's defense. Then, you know, it's Gardner and Bowen's and then Zach Thomas today behind them. It just makes it hard to gain yards there. You know, we were talking to both Daryl Gardner and Tim Bowen said, you know, those guys on the outside, Trace Armstrong, 13 and a half sacks, Jason Taylor with 10. They're getting all the notoriety. <laughs> and Mr. Gardner said, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's just fine. They don't want to be in the limelight. They don't want the attention. And, you know, it, I tell you, tough job. It's, it's a thankless job almost. The only people who really can recognize players like uh, Gardner and Bowens are the coaches on their team. And I'll tell you what, all the coaches on the other team, they respect what these two are doing, too. How about the opposing players? They know what's going they on know in the too. middle of that line. Well, I'll tell you, I know those centers and guards know. Third and inches. Just short of the 45-yard line. Jim Finn just ahead of Edron James in the backfield. James, left side, first down, and more. Midfield and into Miami territory to about the 48-yard line. Good, hard running. Eight yards and a first down. Boy, you got to be careful in these situations if you're a defense. Well, how many times have I said this today? Another good block by Ken Dilger at tight end. Number 85, you'll see him. Well, you can't quite to the right of your screen. Look what he did. He took Robert Jones, pushed him outside all the way in the backfield, allowed Edwin James to cut it out over where he was blocking for a first down. Dave Wanstead said it last night. Tackling Edwin James is a big concern of ours today. Manning, with time, now going to pull it down and run. And to about the 45-yard line, Daryl Gardner making the stop after a three-yard pickup. Well, you're going to see why Peyton Manning runs the football this time and why his wide receivers have had a hard time catching the ball down the field today. Let's watch Miami's defense. Let's don't. So I see it wasn't a good idea, so we're not going to watch it. But Manning makes a good decision, pulled it down, and picks up a few good yards. Second and seven. Clock continues to move. 5.45 to play in the fourth. Colts with the football and a four-point lead. James picks his hole across the 40 to about the 39-yard line. Kenny Mixon, Robert Jones with the stop. Boy, how valuable is this? You get the football back. You're up 14 to 10. You're playing against the Indianapolis coach. You're thinking, well, we got to stop the pass. Edwin James is in the backfield, and they are just taking the ball and running it right at Miami and having good success. Edwin now 102 yards on the day, over 100 yards for the 16th time. Excuse well, me. I was going to say, Greg, what makes Edwin James so good, catches the football, but he can run for power inside and still has the speed to break it outside. James again breaks a tackle across the 35 to the 33, and that's first down. Well, Zach Thomas sails out, tries to make the play to stop the first down. He goes flying up in there, but Jim Finn gets just enough of Zach Thomas where he can't square up on Edron James, and James picks up the first down. So, 
The Colts move the sticks, continue to move the clock, 4.20 to play in the fourth. And Peyton Manning letting that play clock go right down. Oh, yeah. Taking a page from Miami here. Slow it down. Two to one, and the snap goes off. James again. Penalty marker is down. That'll Andrew stop the clock. The ball carrier. Clock of the play. Oh, that's a killer. It's a hold against the Colts. You know, you're moving the football. You're eating the clock up. Holding 76 offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. Steve McKinney, the left guard. You're running up in there for some more yards. Now holding penalty, it just changes everything. And, of course, we knew it was against the Colts, Greg, because their <laughs> coaches are next to us up here and tend to voice their displeasure from time to time throughout the afternoon. Tenth penalty of the game against Indianapolis, and it's a first and 20. The line of scrimmage now the 43. See the Colts holding on ball, eating up the time of possession. Manning rolls, throws, Marcus Pollard to the 40. Forward to about, oh, the 36-yard line. Patrick Sertain, the tackle. Marcus Pollard, this is a young man, didn't even play high school football, except at the intramural stage. He was a basketball player at Bradley University. Basketball player at Bradley University. Yeah, and Greg Ed Bradley played flag football, and he was, of course, he must have been a star playing there, flag football, but. Says he went out and worked out for the Colts because Ken Geiger, a Scott, spotted him. Yep. And he, he said he wasn't very impressive in the weight room. Didn't know pass routes, his footwork wasn't terrific, and the Colts loved him. <laughs> down to two, down to one on the play clock, and he just gets the snap off again. James follows Pollard to a hole to the 30-yard line. Zach Thomas again with a stop. And we have a timeout on the field, stopping the clock at 3.07. Well, let's take a look at the play, Greg, and watch Marcus Pollard, number 81, going to come across the formation. He's the fullback on this play. Robert Jones gets him out of the way. Edron James runs it up inside. Now you talked about Marcus Pollard. He is the second tight end. Kim Dilger, the first tight end on this team. The Colts love the two tight end situation. They really don't run many plays with the with the fullback in there. And Marcus Pollard, this is the last year of his contract. It's, well, it's a big year for him, but it's big year for the Colts. We asked him yesterday, we said, do you want to stay? He says, yeah, I want to stay. I like it here. And, and Jim Morris said keeping him is a priority. He could easily go somewhere else and start. You know, and, and we were here in the preseason. I thought it was going to be a given that Marcus Pollard would not be here. But Jim Morris seemed pretty upbeat yesterday. We're going to try to keep him. And I think Marcus Pollard has a wonderful role here. He's kind of the, the tight end that can be away from Ken Dilger, can kind of go down the field because he's fast make the big plays in the passing game, and I don't know if he can go somewhere else and find it where it fits him so good. He said, uh, <laughs> coming out of Bradley and not having played football, I said, can we assume that the Colts got you at a bargain basement price? He goes, yeah, you can assume that. Third and seven. Manning throws. Intercepted at the five-yard line. Brock Marion to the 20. To the 25, penalty marker is down as Marion was forward to the 31-yard line. That's intercepted by Marion's Marion. fifth pick of the season. Well, this is a coverage that the holding on the run back. After the change of possession, illegal block in the back. Number 99 of the return team, 10 yards, first down Miami. So Jason Taylor's illegal block backs them up. Here's the play. Well, watch Peyton Manning anticipates, throws it down the field, just misses the wide receiver. And a good job. You'll see the wide receiver, Jerome Payton, just behind his head. And that's why Brock Marion standing there to make the interception. Just misses. First turnover by the Colts today. And now it's the defense chore. 2.56 to play. Miami with two timeouts remaining. 
Little flare. Denson to the 20. First down yardage and more to the 40. And bumped out of bounds across the 40 at about the 42-yard line. Chad Cota after a 28-yard pickup. For those of you expecting to see 60 Minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS in the game between Miami and Indianapolis. I'm Greg Gumbel along with Phil Sims and Armin Katayan. The Colts lead the Dolphins 14 to 10, 246 to play here in the fourth quarter. 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following this game, except on the West Coast. First down from the 42. Stewart throws, incomplete, terrific play by Chad Cota as Heward was looking for Autry Denson over the middle. Well, anytime the Colts defense, they blitz, that puts a safety, Chad Cota, on the offensive back. That time it's Autry Denson. Sees him run across the field and knocks the ball down. We talked to Chad Cota yesterday. He said the problem is we've been falling behind early lately, as they did at Chicago and Green Bay, and he said the intensity level hadn't been what it should be. It has been there today. Second and ten. Blitz. Complete to the outside. Leslie Shepard going for the first down, and he has it. Well, Greg, you said it right. It's a blitz, and so every time they blitz, that means the outside receiver, you can see, oh, it's the inside receiver. I'm sorry, it cuts out. Leslie Shepard, the defenders, it's a safety, Jason Belzer. On a wide receiver, good matchup for Miami's offense. Well, Dave Wonstadt was right. Damon Heward, after a week of practice, is not the same Damon Heward who threw three picks against the New York Jets a week ago. Here they come again. The give is to Denson. And Denson across the 45 to the 43-yard line. Under two and a half minutes to play. See, Greg, I, if I was the Colts' defense, I would play it safe. They need a touchdown. Make Damon Heward make tight throws down the field to beat you. Throws over the middle, wide open inside the 35 is Denson. And Denson has another first down for the Dolphins. Coming up on two minutes to play. We welcome those of you who've been watching the game between Tennessee Titans and the Jacksonville Jaguars. One by Jacksonville, 16 to 13. We have just come up on the two-minute warning in Indianapolis. The Colts leading 14-10. Miami driving. Two minutes to play. Heward from the shotgun on first down. Miami trailing by four. Quick pass outside, complete, and out of bounds is Burt Emanuel. And he is close to a first down. Well, Miami, I mean, the Indianapolis Colts keep coming with the blitzes. And Miami, they're ready for him. When you blitz a quarterback, it really makes his decision-making very easy. He's going to catch it, look for the guy, and throw the football. If you stay back, cover the guys, it makes him look at his receivers. Better chance of making a mistake. Second and one, Autry Denson carries for the first down. So that's a first down inside the 25 to about the 22-yard line. Peyton Manning has thrown touchdown passes to Marvin Harrison, two of them. J.J. Johnson has rushed for the only touchdown by the Dolphins. Heward throws. Denson tackled at the 18-yard line by Mike Peterson. No, no use hurrying up here. You still have two timeouts, a minute 23. Second and six. Heward throws for the end zone. Touchdown. Aronde Gadsden with the catch. This is almost reminiscent of last year in that exact same spot. Dan Marino hit Aronde Gadsden. And I'll tell you what, the Colts, they had to pass coverage on to stop that play, and Damon Hewitt stuck it in there. Watch as you look, it'll be to the right of your screen. There's two defenders over there. Nobody gets wide enough. And a Rondé Gaston in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Olindo Mare looks to add the extra point. And it is good. 
70 seconds to play. Boy, Heward with a bullet. Well, you said it right. He brought everything with that football. And look at the toes. The toes of Aronde Gadsden. Aronde Gadsden told us last night, degenerative arthritis in the big toes, toes. on both feet. And he says they have to perform surgery. He's putting it off as long as possible. Uh, and, you know, when they, these plays work, it is exciting for the coaches. What a two-minute drill by Damon Heward. What a comeback for him today. Regardless if they win this game or not, he's played under control the whole day, really never forced the action. I can't think of one throw at the top of my head that, where he took a chance that he shouldn't have been. This is the way Dave Wanstead wanted him to play, and the defense came through for the Miami Dolphins, let the offense plot along until it found its pace here in the second half. Miami went 86 yards in a minute and 46 seconds. Peyton Manning will be looking at something less than a minute 10 and has all three of his timeouts. Here's the touchdown pass once more. I tell you what, this is as good as a Damon here can throw it. Nice job of catching it. Gadsden with his fifth touchdown catch of the season. The young man with the new dot-com business. Yeah, they got the clothing company. But will not be brought out by Terrence Wilkins. So Manning and company will have a minute and 10 seconds and all three timeouts from their own 20-yard line. Two of those nine career comebacks in the fourth quarter have happened this year and here's what's at stake the Miami Dolphins trying to preserve the top spot in the AFC East if they win they go nine and three Indianapolis falls to seven and five along with Buffalo which lost today the Jets a winner and would stay within a game of Miami should the Dolphins win or along with the Colts would pull into a first place tie should the Colts rally here all they need is a field goal a minute 10 three timeouts and they, they have a great field goal kicker. Manning throw. Oh, Marvin Harrison out to the 45-yard line. Marvin Harrison did not turn around until the pass was three-quarters of the way to him. Greg, you were right. Oh, is right. Hey, Marvin Harrison was still looking to the outside. The ball was five yards from him. He turns around right on target. Manning gives to James and nowhere for James to go. And Manning calls a timeout and stops the clock with 42 seconds to play. Oh, come on now. Don't boo. It's a good call. They've run that play successful all day long. It's a chance. Stick a run in there, maybe pick up a cheap 10 yards. Mike Vanderjet has made 16 straight field goals over the last nine games. He has hit on 44 of his last 45 attempts. In fact, the two kickers in this game Vanderjat edged Olindo Mare 145 points to 144 for the NFL scoring title a year ago. Boy, kickers are becoming more and more important in this league because, Greg, how many games we've done this year? The games are almost always decided by seven points or less. So your field goal kicker is going to be one of the most important guys on your football team. 42 seconds remaining. Two timeouts for the Colts. Steps up, throws over the middle. It is tipped in complete. Marvin Harrison was the man over the middle. And he was covered that time by Sam Madison. As good as Sam Madison is, and I think he could be the best corner in this whole league. He's had a terrific year as you watch this last play. Even Sam, watch him on the outside. Underneath, now see, he can go underneath because he knows he has safety help. Even as good as he is, he's needed help covering Marvin Harrison today. Third and ten. <laughs> Manning, under pressure, midfield, falling forward. Let's see where they put the spot. At the 46-yard line, that'll be a yard shy of a first down, and they call timeout their second. Well, that was a nice run. I mean, he ran. This is a guy, this is a quarterback, that knows the situation. He knew it was third and 10, so he knows every yard he picks up is valuable. 
This is the time you pull it down, you take a hit, you do whatever it takes. Look, he broke a tackle. Two defenders, Zach Thomas and Jerry Wilson, runs through him and gets about another yard and a half. Now, see, if that would be early in the game, I would go, what are you doing? You know, but Peyton Manning knows the situation. It's time to lower your head and take, an ex take the big hit to get that extra yard. Mike, now, Mike Vanderjad on the sideline not showing any of the pressure. A little wave to the cameras. Oh. He's something else. Fourth and one. If Manning doesn't convert this, Vanderjat won't get a chance. Edron James, first down to the 42-yard line. Gerald Gardner made the stop. Sorry, Greg, going to kill the clock. Always takes longer than you think to kill the clock. Boy, that was a good job by the Colts. They got it done in about seven seconds. If you're wondering about Vanderjat, how far he kicks them, his long for this year is 45. Well, always remember, career long is 53 yards. When you're in the dome, I don't, I don't know, I'm not a kicker, but I'm going to guess it's seven, at least seven to eight yards difference inside here. No wind, nothing to resist the football. So 50, 55 yards is not that big of a deal when you're indoors. Colts with one timeout remaining. Manny throws it away over the head of his intended receiver, Terrence Wilkins, on the right. Well, that is, that was quick thinking again. Daryl Gardner, the defensive line, they collapsed that pocket, and Peyton Manning did the right thing. Throw it away, give yourself at least one more chance, or maybe two, before you call the timeout. What a terrific rush from the defensive line of the Dolphins. The Dolphins are lucky. They're good enough up front with their defensive line. They don't have to blitz the pressure of quarterback. Third and 10. Oh, wide open over the middle. The pass in and out of the hands of Jerome Payton, number 86. And did he have real estate in front of him? They had it. They do the. They do this. Watch. They're crossing. Here comes Payton this way. And look at Terrence Wilkins going the other way. When you cross in the middle, it makes it tough for the defense to run through all that traffic. And Peyton Manning, this is the nice, soft throw that you want in a situation like that. And now they are going to send the field goal unit on with the line of scrimmage at the 42. They call timeout. Eight seconds on the clock. And I tell you, this is the right call. For a couple of reasons, Greg. Go ahead and try it. He can make it from about 59 or 60 yards indoors. That's about what it's going to be. And also, if you go for it on fourth, somebody like that last play, if you catch the ball and run for a few yards, the clock will run out, run out on you before you can call timeout. Well, I remember... Vanderjack, they were playing the Buffalo Bills. The last play of the game, he kicks a field goal to win it. They said, what were you thinking about as you were kicking it? I forgot who he had a friend on the other, on Buffalo's team. He says, well, I just felt bad for him that he was going to have to lose the game. So a very confident kicker. Of course, kicking one this far, I don't know if the thoughts are, are the same. He has hit 16 straight, 44 of his last 45. This one is going to be spotted just inside the 50-yard line. This is going to be a 59-yard field goal attempt. Going to have to kick it low to make it from 60 yards or 59. Partially blocked at the line of scrimmage. The Miami Dolphins are going to win this football game. Mike Vanderjat's field goal attempt to tie the game blocked at the line of scrimmage. And you're right, Phil, he had to kick it low, and someone got a piece of it. Yeah, he tried to drive it, Greg, for 59 yards. He knew it. Dave wants that. 
And how about Damon Hewer oh, coming man. back from what happened to him a week ago? And Mike Vanderjat knew as it was blocked at the line of scrimmage that this was not going to be an overtime game here today. What a comeback from Damon Heward. Damon Heward, 22 of 33 for 185 yards. Once again, the Dolphins win it. 17-14, retain their hold on the top spot in the AFC East. Coming up next on CBS, except in the Pacific time zone, watch 60 Minutes. But first, we'll be sending you to our NFL on CBS studios for the NFL today, right after these messages for Phil Sims and Armand Kate and Greg Gumbel. So long from Indianapolis. You've been watching.